When I was in first grade, I wrote a story about a brown bear went on a big journey. When my teacher gave me back the paper, it said right across the top, you are a writer. I have considered myself a writer ever since. Teachers have the power to make us believe in ourselves. Fortunately for generations of students, Mrs. Knight stayed in the classroom. Research has shown us it is teachers that have the largest impact of any school-based factor on student achievement. Unfortunately, if a teacher wants to take on leadership, the pathway we have open to us is to leave our classrooms and go into administration. We need a teacher leadership pathway that will allow teachers to stay in the classroom while continuing to influence system-wide changes. When I was younger, my dad always said to me, if you want to soar with the eagles, you can't flock with the crows, when he thought I needed to be better tomorrow than I was today. So after about eight years of teaching, I went back to school. And I got my master's degree in curriculum and instruction. And I looked around to see how I could now be a part of improving my school system and discovered that I would need to go back and get an administrator certificate if I wanted to do that. So back I went and I got that administrator certificate. And a job came up a couple of years later and I applied and I didn't get it. So I waited a year or so and I applied again and I still didn't get it. And I was a little upset by this point and I talked to my principal and my superintendent and they told me it wasn't that they didn't think I could do the job, they just really didn't think I'd like the job and they didn't want to lose me out of the classroom. And I was flattered, but what did I do with my ambition? What did I do with my desire to lead? So I looked around the educational landscape, and I found three philanthropic organizations that were focused on improving public education, which is my passion. So for the last five years, I've worked with other teachers from around the country to bring our classroom experience and knowledge to research and to policy discussion. Additionally, my district recognized that I was serious and gave me opportunities to lead from my classroom by letting me help roll out a technology initiative and giving me the chance to work with teachers on learning how to do blended learning. They've supported me and allowed me to be parts of national and state cohorts. And unfortunately, that's not always the case. I became a teacher because I believe that key to achieving the American dream is a free, high-quality public education. I know this because it's my family's story. My dad is the ninth of 12 kids who grew up on Womble Mountain in southern Illinois. Illinois is in the middle of the country. He was very poor by material standards, but very rich in a confidence that he could be successful. You see, my grandmother instilled in all of her children a belief that education and hard work could lead to a successful life. They in turn instilled it in their children, and there are at least 20 of us who are educators today. But not every child has the opportunity for the high quality education my father was able to get. That must change. My dad started school in a one-room schoolhouse on the side of that mountain. The kids would come down from the various other farms. My aunt was a teacher. I think it was the first competency-based education because he learned something and they moved him on. When he got old enough, he went into town and again, a supported school, graduated, went to a state college, became a successful businessman, Every child should have the opportunity to do what he did, to go from a one-room schoolhouse to retiring as the CEO of an international company. Success means that we are able to take what we know and share it. We don't allow our classroom teachers into our policy discussions, and they're the ones that know. They're the ones that have the day-to-day -day experiences that we can bring to those discussions to help fix what's not working. 
Sometimes teachers go ahead and find a way themselves. Dr. Anna Baldwin is a teacher on the Flathead Reservation in Montana, which is in the western United States. As the 2014 Montana State Teacher of the Year and a Teacher Ambassador Fellow at the United States Department of Education, Dr. Baldwin worked with other teachers to bring her experiences from a reservation school to national education policy discussions. She also has convinced her district to let her work as an English teacher half her time and write grants the other half of the time. That matters because her grants now include the needs of students and teachers as she sees them from the classroom. She's also able to bring in grants because she knows what initiatives teachers have in mind. They talk to her. She also used her national contacts to create a diversity conference right there on her campus. It started with a video message from former Secretary of Education John King, and then had sessions about cultures from around the world. She opened up new avenues for her students because of her work outside of the classroom. In Delaware, we have, and Delaware is in the Mid-Atlantic region between New York and Washington, D.C. <laughs> Got to get that in there. Um, we have two gentlemen, Ry Culver and Justin Comages, who have become known as two guys who kind of know what they're doing. They've been on this journey with us that, to learn about instructional technology, and they liked what was happening in their classrooms. So together, they created a blog and a YouTube channel. And they make videos to share pedagogy, instructional strategies, and motivation with other teachers. They now have followers in the thousands. They not only are influencing the teachers in their district, but teachers across the country, maybe even the world. I know that when I'm having a bad day, and teachers have those, I sometimes will watch this video they made. Teachers are superheroes, and you got to do the whole superhero thing. Once I watch that, and I have that two minutes, I'm enthusiastic, i got a smile on my face, and I'm ready to go with the next group of kids. They remind me why I love my job. Taking voices like these and adding them to the policy discussions will change things. I know it will. We have ideas in our classrooms that no one ever hears. So if there's a policy discussion happening and there are no teachers in the room, it needs to stop till they get there. We get out of school about 3.30. When I was getting ready to do this talk, I shared my what I was doing with my students. I always like to learn alongside with them. And I got their feedback. And I said, you know, well, after they counted my ums and gave me a circle to stand in, I asked them, I don't know how to end this. And they kind of laughed at me. And they said, tell them why you're so passionate. You tell us all the time. I said, OK, I will. I'm passionate about teacher leaders because I know it'll work. I know that every student in every zip code in every public school across this country deserves a high quality education tomorrow. And the key to making that happen, it's already there. It's right inside those classrooms. All we have to do is create an expectation that teachers will be able to lead from the classrooms without leaving their students. Thank you.